Okay, we're back live at VMworld 2012. We have a special spotlight segment called mm -hmm. On Security, a panel. And I'm going to ask my panelists to go down and just quickly introduce themselves right. and tell us what they do. That's cheating because you can't say Emma's last name. <laughs> <laughs> go, Emma. <laughs> All right, so this is, oh, perfect. I'm Hema Prefelchandra. I'm CTO and SVP of products at High Trust. Oh, Chris Hoff, uh, Chief Security Architect at Juniper General Rebel Rouser. Mm -hmm. Security evangelist, architect, author. And your podcast, you can put the podcast. Uh, oh, and my podcast, yes. I run the Virtualization Security Podcast, of which okay, so here was an inaugural member. Yes, thank you. First question is, um, what's the current state of security in the VMware ecosystem, and what does VMware have to do beyond the VMware walls as they're extending out their vision to make security work? in the new experiences of abstract, pool, and automate. Edward, we'll start with you. The biggest problem I see in the virtual environment right now with security is still a lack of education. The security folks are learning, but they're still not learning fast enough. The virtualization folks don't know enough about security, but they're the ones implementing it in a lot of cases. I still see that gap being there. The technology exists to secure the environment. It's implementing it and learning about how to implement it properly. So, uh, in my case, I think that the three layers that they're introducing in terms of the product families, um, at the infrastructure or the, the core, the platform layer, they need to be a lot more open and transparent. Uh, allow more interfaces for our vendors to plug in because most of the customers already have chosen their security vendors. They're not going to necessarily look to VMware to fill that gap. On the higher tiers, I think they've already taken the open stance, but they need to take it, apply that across all layers. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Chris? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Edward. I think the underlying technology is available in pieces, right? And the problem is that uh, to use uh, an old term, it, I hate this term, but I use it. It, kind of, it takes a village, right? The reality is that if you look at enterprise and service providers, uh, they have existing partnerships, operational practices, they have favorite and, and non-favorite approaches to how they do things from a security perspective, and in many cases, uh, we can't always do greenfield stand-ups of data centers. We're, and the, the notion that you can just pick up and move what you have, but make it all better, uh, is very difficult, especially given the legacy applications uh, as well as legacy application architectures we've talked about. So a lot of it is, you know, in, in many cases if you're a platform provider, you need to do more than put the word ecosystem on a slide deck to convince the world that you have one. And when you do it, you need consistency across a well-planned timeline for things like your APIs. Because when you're talking about startups or even large companies, when you build solutions on a set of APIs, for example, that change, uh, or aren't consistent, um, or aren't you know uh, equal, it becomes a real problem. So when um, we had Simon Crosby on, who's got a new startup called Bromium, which we'll debate in a second. Um, so give you time to think of some good, good uh, comments on that. But the, but the one point he made was enterprises are under siege by attack. Um, and so <laughs> so what with mobile devices, multiple touch points. Where's it broken right now, and where is, is it a complete re-architecture? We were talking earlier with Chris on this, but I'd like to get all your comments on that. What does a company do to manage that, that, that threat, the security threat? 